Let's welcome our good friend Jeff Allen, all right? Thank you. All right, I'll tell you, it's good to be back. I got, I, my oldest now is 17, so it's been a couple years. And every generation's different. I figured some things out. Uh, you know, uh, when I was 17, I had long, stringy hair, and my father used to introduce me as his daughter everywhere we went, you know? <laughs> my daughter, Jeff. Uh, 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 uh. You know. So I figured out at 17, my problem with my father was he was too old to understand me. So I said, when I have kids, I'm going to be not old enough. I'm going to be understand my children. And I have a 17-year-old at home. And I'm telling you, I am absolutely clueless <laughs> as to what goes through this boy's brain sometimes. Walking by the living room about four months ago, he stops me. He says, hey, Dad, I need some help. All right. He says, I don't know if I should get my tongue pierced. He says, you don't know? I said, oh, I can help you with this one. So lay your tongue on a table. I'll whack it with a hammer. How's that? And I can keep hitting it till the light goes on in your head. You know? What the heck is going through his mind? This kid's still having nightmares from his first immunization shot. Now he wants some guy named Slash to drive a railroad spike through his tongue. And I told him, I said, you know how unsanitary that is? And I'm not kidding. He says to me, it's at the mall. <laughs> he said, it's like a medical clinic. Like a medical clinic. These guys are like doctors. That's what he said, like doctors. Except they didn't go through med school. They went through metal shop. That's the problem. <laughs> and he's 17 now. He's driving. So we let him drive us to church on Sunday so we can get our prayer time in before we get there. <laughs> Sometimes there's so many miracles, we just skip church, go right to Cracker Barrel. <laughs> Shut up. That's right. And we go to Cracker Barrel a lot because it's about the only time we all can get a fair meal from that child. Man, this kid eats everything, and I'm ready to get him a trough. It's getting out of hand. I was almost killed him last July. I went out and bought two and a half pounds of grapes. I went and bought two and a half pounds of red grapes. I love red grapes. Two and a half pounds. I picked them all off the stem myself, threw them in a colander. I washed them up so that when the water got in the refrigerator, it would make the grapes crisp. Crisp. <laughs> I went out and hit golf balls for a couple hours. I'm driving back, going by a mini mart, thinking, should I get a Gatorade? And my brain said, no, we have red grapes. We don't need a Gatorade. Ah. So I'm driving in, I walk into the living room, and every parent in this room knows what I saw. My kid, Jethro Bodine, coming out of my living room with an empty colander, empty colander. They said, tell me you didn't eat two and a half pounds of grapes. I said, I don't know, I just ate what was in the bowl. I said, first of all, it's not a bowl, it's a colander. I'll give you a bowl, this is a bowl, it's about that big, holds about 12 grapes. And a bowl, it's a colander. And he says, is that a lot, two and a half pounds? I said, I don't know, if I were you, I'd just get a couple magazines, I wouldn't stray too far from the bathroom. You're nuts. Food things getting out of hand. My wife and I have gotten to the point where we stash food in our bedroom. We hide brownies, cakes, cookies, things, so the kids can't get to them. We'll go in the room late at night, and I know the kids think we're doing something else, but we're just under the covers eating brownies and laughing. <laughs> you hit over 40, it doesn't take a whole lot to get you going, man. You know? And I got to tell you, I'm glad the laughter's back, too, man. A couple of, when I was here last time, I shared some stuff about my wife and her health problems and the cancer and stuff. And I got to tell you that two and a half years now, she's clean. So there's not that thing. Yeah. It's good. And what you all didn't know that night was after you laid hands on my wife and prayed with her, we went back to the room. And uh, my wife said to me, we're laying in bed. And uh, you got to understand my wife. I mean, first of all, we're northern Christians, so we're a little repressed anyway. And uh, but she, but she said, uh, I felt his presence. I felt his presence. And uh, that night she gave her life to Jesus Christ. And, uh, and, and what, she, what she said to me, was just so great was that she said she felt healed. 
She feels healed. She says, I know, I know I'm healed. And we're not naive people. We know the cancer can come back any day. But what got healed that night was her soul. So I'm going to be spending eternity with that woman. I better straighten up. <laughs> not even here I'm getting static man. take care folks God bless you thank you very much thanks for having me